Good evening, Pastor Craig here, just welcoming you to Bible study. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. We are going to continue our study this evening in the covenants, and particularly in the covenant between God and Abraham. Um, well, let's open in a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you this evening, and we just want to thank you for uh, being able to uh, study this your word together and to just uh, learn from it and uh, being able to uh, apply it to our lives, Lord. Uh, please open our hearts and open our minds as we go through this and uh, just uh, help us as we do. God, we love you. We just pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, last week we looked at five covenants in the Old Testament. We looked at uh, Adam, the covenant between Adam and God, Noah, Abraham. Abraham, my old mind isn't uh, where it used to be, uh, what were the other ones, the new covenant and Jeremiah and uh, David, the covenant of David between David and the Lord and uh, we looked at those with the thought that this week we are going to start a study on Abraham. And the covenant that God made with Abraham in Genesis and what that means and how we can look at uh, Abraham's life and the covenant that was made between God and Abraham and through Abraham the rest of his uh, descendants down through the the ages up to us and how that uh, will uh, kind of shake out into uh, today the new covenant um, that Jesus Christ um, brought and uh, gave to us. So today we are going to look at Abraham's, and I'm calling this Abraham's family life. And family is, and uh, each letter stands for a different topic that we're going to study. And tonight we're starting with the beginning, F, and the word f we're using for F to show Abraham and, and Abraham's beliefs and what he did was faith. So if you want to take notes or if you want to just keep a running tally of all the different letters that we're going to be using for the next few weeks, um, the F from family stands for faith. So we are going to go to the logical place when we're talking about Abraham. But we're going to turn to the New Testament. We're going to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, we're not going to, it's quite long, we're not going to read the whole thing, but I like to refer to this as the Coles Notes of the Old Testament. This uh, hits all the highlights, well, not all of them, uh, hits quite a few of the highlights of the Old Testament, and it puts it into perspective of what each and every one of the, uh, I guess, heroes of the faith, if you want to call them that, the people in the Old Testament, what they believed and why they did it. And it's this word that we are using today, faith. And this chapter is what is generally called the faith chapter. And so I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll read the first couple of verses and then we're going to skip down a bit. But Hebrews 11:1. 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. So faith is knowing something is there without being able to see it. And that is what the ancients were commended for. And then it starts with uh, faith. By faith we understand, and draws us in, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is, what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And then it goes through a list of Old Testament people. It goes through uh, Abel and Cain, um, by faith, uh, he was commanded as righteous, uh, Abel was. And then it goes to Enoch. And then it goes to Noah, who was warned about things not seen. He hadn't seen the flood, but he was warned that it was coming. And he built the ark. And um, by faith, he condemned the world, but became heir of the righteousness that is keeping with faith. Now, all the people listed here get one or two verses, except for Abraham. Abraham gets many verses, 
and uh, chapter, or sorry, chapter 11, verse 8 through um, 17, um, and even farther, 18, 19 even. So I'm going to read those because it talks about Abraham. It says, By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as in his hair, in, let me start that over without a tongue twister there. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him in the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, as he, as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. For f by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead, back from death. It's by faith that Abraham did what he uh, what set out to do. Uh, if we go back to Genesis, Genesis chapter 12, we can see where his faith came in. Now, what is faith? Before we go into that, what is faith? I think we know what faith is, but a definition of faith is confidence or trust in a person or thing, belief that is not based on proof, belief in God or in the doctrines or teachings of religion, belief in anything as a code of ethics, standard, or merit, or a system of religious belief. So faith, as in scripture, faith is... Uh, Basically believing in things we cannot see, having that hope in things that we do not see. It's being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And Abraham did that very thing. If we look at um, 12.1 in Genesis, the Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. That is the beginning of the covenant. We talked about two different kinds of covenants last week, uh, conditional and unconditional. The uh, conditional is uh, between a king and the servants or, or the Lord and the vassals or whatever it is. It's someone who can make the, uh, the promise, who can make the covenant. If you do this, this will happen. And then there's the other one, which is unconditional, and that is, I'm going to do this for you and I don't expect anything in return. And that's uh, unconditional, um, also called a royal grant uh, covenant. So we have those two. And we go back here and God says, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. And this is the covenant. And I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse and all the people on earth will be blessed through you. And those are words that are important. But this next, these next three words are probably some of the most important uh, words in Abraham's uh, uh, history. And that is, after this, God says, take everything and leave. Go, to, um, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. And what does it say? So Abram went. He did it by faith. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know what was going to be there. He had faith. He had the hope that 
the, um, was going to be there, that God would lead him in the right direction, and that was where his faith was. So he followed in what God told him. And it says a few times in there, um, uh, sorry, it says, so, uh, I just lost my place. <laughs> so, Abram did what God had told him to do. He went. And then we have in verses, um, verse 4, that's verse 4. So Abram went. And if we look in verse 5, how does verse 5 start? He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. They went, they set out. Um, verse 6, Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. So he went again, he traveled. He's in motion. He is moving towards what God has for him. He's moving towards the land that God is taking him to. Uh, if we look at verse 8, um, so there, he, God, um, the Canaanites were in the land, and then in verse 7, God comes back, he appears to Abram again, and he reiterates, he says, to your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Verse 8 says, from there he went on towards the hills east of Bethel. He went again. He's on the move. And again, there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. And then it says, Then Abram set out and continued towards the Negev. Abraham is on the move. God said, Go. God is leading him. And Abram is going to many different... Abram, Sarah, Lot, and all their, their uh, possessions and people are moving towards where God is is taking them to where God has for them to go. Um, and all because of this covenant. All because Abram, Abraham had the faith to go. Now what is this covenant? We talked a little bit. We quickly talked about it last week because we were going through five different ones. But today I want to uh, look more specifically and more in depth at this um, covenant that God and Abraham made together. God made it with Abraham. So it says, God says, I will make you into a great nation. God says, I will bless you. God says, I will make your name great. God says, you will be a blessing. God said that he would bless those who bless you, bless Abraham. God would curse whoever cursed Abraham and all the people on the earth would be blessed through Abraham. And also last week we mentioned, if we go back to uh, the garden, of, uh, back to the beginning in uh, chapter 1 of Genesis, 128. It says, it's talking about uh, the humans, the male and female. It says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So what's important there is be fruitful and increase in number. And that is taking 128 and it's expanding on that because now it's Abraham who is going to be a great nation. It's Abraham who through, um, through him, through his line, is going to come the nation, the great nation that is going to be built up and uh, going to move forward. Now, Abraham probably had no notion of what state that was going to take, how uh, it was going to look when it came to fruition. But if we go back to Hebrews 11 again, it says, um, talks exactly, just it talks about that when it says, talks about all the people in the Old Testament that it mentions, and it says, These were all commended for faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us 
would they be made perfect. Only in Jesus Christ. Only later on, through the lineage of Abraham and David and, and everyone, and up through Jesus Christ, would what God was promising come to fruition. And all the Old Testament people were commended for their faith because they had that hope in what they could not see. And they put their faith in God and moved forward with God in what he wanted them to do. The covenant, the original covenant is in, as I already read it, 12, um, 2 and 3, or 2 through, yeah, 2 and 3. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on earth will be blessed through you. What a great promise. And then God made it there. And then throughout the story of Abraham, throughout the history of Abraham, God comes back and he reiterates it to Abraham. And he comes back to Isaac, Abraham's son, later on. And three times he, God and uh, Jacob, sorry, Isaac, God and Isaac, God re reiterates the same thing with Isaac. And then Jacob, Isaac's son, um, gets a reminder three times as well. And then in Exodus, Moses also gets a reminder of the covenant, uh, the Abrahamic covenant, to, um, uh, to that they are living out what was promised to Abraham. And we're going to just quickly look at a, a different things. So Abraham, he got the covenant in 12, 1 and 2, and then already, not already, for Abraham it would have been a while, but in verse 7, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. He's being reminded again. 15, 5 through 21. Uh, we're not going to read that whole thing, but uh, it's uh, the word of the Lord came to him, to Abraham, Abram. This man will not be your heir. And this is... Uh, Abram's trying to figure out how he's going to be made into a great nation if he doesn't have any, any children yet, if he has no sons or daughter, he doesn't have any children. But if he doesn't have any sons, how is he going to be a great nation? How is uh, his name going to be great if there's no one to uh, pass it on to? And so he is going to, he wants to um, give his, his uh, estate, he wants to make Eli, Eliezer of Damascus his descendant he wants to make him his heir and God says um, no that's not gonna happen uh, the, the word when Moses or sorry Moses Abraham said this to God God responded this man will not be your heir but a son coming to your own body will be your will be your heir he took him outside and said look up at the heavens and count the stars if indeed you can count them then he said to him so shall your offspring B. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited him at, to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of, the, out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you to the land to possess it. And then uh, Abram asked some questions, how am I going to possess it? And God says, you know, sacrifice to me. Um, and that was a reminder to Abraham that he was going to uh, still have what God originally promised. And that promise was, was still in effect and it was still be in effect. Chapter 17, 4 through 8. And this is the covenant of circumcision. Um, Abraham fell face down and God said to him, and, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come to you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abram, As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, 
for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. And then he goes on to talk about the circum covenant of circumcision and how that's part of it. So that is, this part of it is now a uh, um, conditional covenant. They need to, to be circumcised and uh, for it to go forward. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So the covenant will stay with the people who are circumcised and those who aren't, the covenant is not with them any longer. Uh, the next chapter, chapter uh, 18, 18 and 19. Abram pleads with Sodom. Three visitors come to visit and uh, they're, uh, when the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom and Abraham walked along to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abram will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abram what Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, and then goes on to... Uh, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great. How bad it is. Abraham, you know, says, you know, don't destroy it. What, what about the, uh, what if there's uh, 50 righteous men there? And God says, all right, I'll spare it of his 50. And then Abraham seems to think for a minute. He says, well, wait a minute, what about 45? God says, okay, I'll spare it if you can find 45 righteous men. And Abraham says, well, what about 30? And he just keeps going down to... Uh, keeps going down and down he goes down to 20 and uh, then it ends up at 10 what if there's 10 righteous men in Sodom oh we destroy it and uh, the Lord said I will not destroy it if you can find 10 righteous men and uh, we'll look in future weeks we're going to look at the the story of Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot and his 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 family but that was a reminder of the covenant as well um, chapter 22, Abraham is tested, and this is with, um, takes Isaac up the, up the mountain, and he's, uh, told to sacrifice his son, and, uh, in 17 and 18, um, The angel of the Lord called Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and you have not withheld your son, your only son, I will certainly bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sands on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And though your offspring all, through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants and they set off together for Beersheba. And Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Again, it's brought up that Abraham was faithful. Uh, this had to have been a nerve-wracking time. I'm sure Abraham, he had the faith that God was going to deliver him. Even if he, uh, you know, he was told to kill his son and he was willing to do it. Maybe he realized, you know, God can do anything and raise him from the dead. God, you know, whatever it is, Abraham... Abraham, sorry, had uh, followed God. He had showed his faith, and he went with it, and he was, again, rewarded for his faith in following that. Uh, if we look at, and we're just going to quickly look at the rest, Isaac, chapter, 20, chapter 26, um, Abraham's, Abraham's son, Isaac, uh, 2 to 4. Now, there was a famine in the land, Besides the previous famine in Abraham's time, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I have sworn to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. Abraham had faith. 
His son Isaac had faith. There was a famine in the land. As we see later on in, in Scripture, people, people in Canaan, people in Israel, not Israel yet, but in, in Canaan, that area, if there was a famine, they generally went to Egypt. We see it with Joseph and his brothers. And uh, we see it with the, uh, um, the Jews, when the, the Israelites, when they're leaving, uh, this isn't a famine, but they were leaving um, Egypt uh, and they stopped and they decided they would rather go back. They would rather uh, go back and deal with Pharaoh so they can eat instead of staying with the covenant, staying with God and moving forward. They, they were wanting to go back. Now, they didn't go back, but they were very close to uh, turning around and going. Um, so that's with Isaac. Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Esau was, uh, had the birthright. He sold it for a, a bowl of stew. And Jacob became the heir of the covenant. And if we look at uh, chapter 28 in Genesis, uh, it says uh, 13 to 15. These numbers get smaller every week. Uh, there above it stood the Lord. This is Jacob's dream. There above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and the south. All people on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. 35, 11, and 12. And you see where we're going? This covenant made with Abraham goes through his descendants. It goes all the way down through um, with Abraham and into Isaac and into Jacob and then to... Um, to Jacob's son, Jacob's son be, sons become the twelve tribes of Israel, and the the um, the covenant goes with them. It goes through them uh, when they end up going to Egypt, and their 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 ancestors are there for four hundred and thirty years as you know as slaves. And um, at first not, but then they become slaves, and they're working, and then they they go out and they do the Exodus, and it goes out with them too. And God reminds Moses of, or not he reminds him, but God brings up the covenant to Moses as well. In chapter 3 of Exodus, we can see that Exodus 3, 6 to 8, and this is Moses at the burning bush. Uh, Moses says, here, uh, God calls and says, Moses, Moses, and Moses says, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals. For the place you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this Moses hid his face because he was afraid of the Lord. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I came down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into the good and spacious land. A land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, the Jesubites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, so now go, I am sending you to the Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. He is the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, and the covenant goes along to the Israelites. And the last one is, and this is to Moses as well, and it's in chapter 6. And this is God promising deliverance, 6, 2 to 8. I uh, won't read the whole thing. It says, God says to Moses, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, where they resided as foreigners. 
Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. The Exodus was God, uh, the word remembering is in there, but it's not, doesn't do justice to what God is saying. If God didn't forget about them, it was just time for them to move on and to become people of the covenant, to move on. It was a 400 year um, almost stoppage of you know, covenant moving forward while they were in Egypt. And now it was time for them to get back to where God had promised them. That's why they call it the promised land. It was promised to Abraham. It was promised to his descendants. And the Israelites were his descendants, so they were to go. And to go, it would take what? The, I don't know, the, the word starts with an F. I can't say F word because that's got bad connotations nowadays. But the word that starts with an F that we're talking about today, the faith. It took faith for all of these people to do what God was asking of them. To go out. For Abraham to step out of the country where he, his fa all of his family was. He was com probably comfortable there. He knew everything. And God asked him, told him, move out. Go. Go to the land I'm going to show you. And he reiterated many times the covenant that he was going he was making with Abraham and Abraham's descendants which comes all the way down to us uh, through Jesus Christ now but it's not just in the old testament uh, if we look at the new testament um, if we look at acts 325 it's and this is peter up he's uh preaching to the onlookers, that's the uh, we are at the uh, Peter's addressing the crowds, and in 325, um, well, 24 says, Indeed, beginning with Samuel, all the prophets who have spoken have foretold these days, and you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with, the, with your fathers. He said to Abraham, Through your offspring, all people on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servants, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Abraham was the first one sent out in faith. Now, people before him had faith in, in God as well, but Abraham was the start of all of the, this covenant that was going to be go all the way up through Jesus Christ and to us today. So that was Peter preaching to the to the Jews. But if we go to Galatians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. If we go to Galatians 3, 8, and this is Paul talking to the Gentiles. So we have Peter talking to the Jews and Paul out talking and preaching to the Gentiles. So uh, in 3, 8, um, well, this is Paul writing to the Galatians, and he says, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by human effort? Have you experienced so much vain if it really is, was in vain? Does God give you this, his spirit and work miracles among you by your observing the law or by your believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God and was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Through Abraham, all those who have faith are children of Abraham. And who received the, the covenant, the blessing that came with the covenant? Abraham's descendants, Abraham's children. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, if you have faith in God, we are children 
of Abraham, children of God, children of the covenant. All nations will be blessed through you. Last week I mentioned a camp song, Father Abraham had many sons and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them and so are you, so let's just praise the Lord. It's kind of a silly song and you do weird actions, but it's, it's true. Father Abraham had many, well, many sons, many children. I am one of them and so are you if we walk by faith, if we have faith in Jesus Christ. If we have the faith that we need to have. So that's our, our, our study for tonight. We're looking at faith. Abraham's family. And the family of Abraham all begins with faith. The faith that Abraham had to step out of where he lived. To step out and to follow God to where God was going to take him. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't really know what was going to happen along the way. But through faith, through the love he had, through just believing what God was saying to him, he went and blessed all those who came after, all those who are children of Abraham. We have the blessing. We have the covenant because Abraham first left. And I just want to um, read one more time. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. We have faith. If we are Christ followers, if we um, are walking in Christ, if we are living the holy life, we are descendants of Abraham. And we are benefactors of the covenant, the new covenant that Jesus Christ brought for us. Next week, we are, if, if you're good at spelling, Abraham's family, next week we are going to look at the A, and we will probably get into the M as well. Should I spoil it and t t tell them what the A and the M stand for? No, we're going to leave it as a, as a mystery. So uh, I'll probably tell you next Tuesday night when I uh, do my video. But thank you for joining us. Um, next week, if you could, we are going to... Um, Go, we're going farther in the story of, of um, Abraham. So if you can read uh, chapter Genesis chapters 13 and 14 for next week. Genesis 13 and 14. Uh, and that's Abram and Lot uh, separating and Abram rescuing Lot. So thank you for joining us. We will, um, I'll close in prayer, and then we're talking about uh, uh, Moses, our s sermon series for uh, Sundays is a uh, uh, long time ago in a desert far, far away. This past Sunday was Moses, A New Hope, and this, oh my gosh, this coming Sunday is Doubt, The Phantom Menace. So uh, if you can, join us, join us live, or you can uh, watch here on Facebook, uh, we leave the And for the faith that we have in you. And for what that means for the, our relationship with you. Lord, as we study um, your word, just help us apply it to our lives. Help us to hide it in our hearts. And then to share it with others. Father God, we just can't, we love you. We just pray this in your name. Amen.
Amen. Have a good week, and we will see you later.